put in the field of transport. And so let's get straight to Secretary of State for Transport, Conservative MP Grant Shapps, who joins me now. And I know you're keen to talk about, and as more and more people uh, move into the EV revolution, electric cars, electric vehicles, there is a pressure on charging points. But I understand you're galloping forward with a solution, Secretary of State. Good morning. Morning, morning, Nick. Well, the good news is we already have uh, the most fast chargers in, in the West, in the Western world. The fastest but in the West. I the love it. The fastest well, in the West. Yeah. And I'm going to, there's a little video coming out uh, today with, you know, Quinton Wilson who used to do. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I've done a little video with him uh, in a, <laughs> it's actually in a Tesco's car park uh, where we're having a sort of challenge on on, on uh, charging up cars and the fastest chargers in the West. Do you know, you, ca- you cannot go now to fill your car up in a, a supermarket without bumping into a government minister. We've got <laughs> Mr. Sunak at Sainsbury's, we've got you at Tesco. I think I'll just have to go to Morrison's and be left alone, uh, Mr. Shapps. Yeah, Do continue. No, no, we'll go there too, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but anyway, um, the point is that we've got about 30,000 public chargers in this country at the moment. Uh, this plan is going to uh, enlarge that by 10 times, 300,000 public chargers wow. uh, to sort of you know fire up the, the nation and make it much easier. At the moment, as you know, I've driven an electric car for about the last three years. Yeah. At the moment, you, you turn up, you have to download apps, you have to have a wallet full of different cards for membership schemes it's impossible so we we're, we're saying any rapid chargers have to be contactless uh, you can pay with tapping your phone tapping your card uh, and make it much much more transparent easier uh, more record of the uptime and all the rest of it it's a tenfold expansion then of charging points what is the deadline how long will that take Mr. yeah that tenfold fold is by 2030 that remember wow. is when petrol and diesel cars will cease pure petrol and diesel cars will cease to be sold will, will uh, that still be country. enough sorry to talk over well, you will, will 300,000 be enough well i should mention actually there are already 300,000 in people's homes um, so there are already there's 300,000 already there. There's another 30,000 on the street. Um, as I say, we're ahead of other countries with this. Um, if not, we'll have to expand it further. It's hard to know exactly because what we don't know is how people's habits, charging habits will develop over the years. So we know we have to have chargers at home on the streets, lampposts where people haven't got uh, drives. Uh, we need them at the destinations, your work, the shopping centre. Tesco, uh, other supermarkets also <laughs> offer <Indeed>. variety, <laughs> whoever. Uh, and then also um, rapid charging along the routes. So motorway service stations, for example, being able to plug in, you know, and get 100 miles in, in, in a few minutes, that, that sort of thing. Is, so is we, that your goal? Because I just wonder, lastly, before we move on, I'm afraid I don't currently drive an electric vehicle. I sense you'll make sure that I'm dragged into one kicking and screaming fairly shortly. But how long, if I want, say, a 100-mile jar- drive or whatever, 50 yeah. there, 50, how long typically is that going to take to get me that well, much look, juice from one of yeah. your chargers well it, it actually depends on the kind of charger that you plug oh, right. into so i was at bp pulse yesterday they're, they're making these charges up at, at uh, milton Keynes, and uh they, they were showing me charges uh there which charge with what's called 350 kilowatt charging that means that by the time you've gone and you know grabbed a cup of coffee or used the bathroom you'd have another 100 miles in the car oh, right. so you know they're becoming really very quick and the technology is improving all the time. I've seen this in the time that I've been driving an electric car. Right. and getting very much faster. And just lastly, I'm sure there are some um, tower blocks in Welling Hatfield with uh, flats and apartments, people living on top. What if, if you've got a sort of 10 or 15 floor uh, apartment block such as that in Welling Hatfield or anywhere else in the country? What are you going to do about that? So Secretary part State. of today's announcement is yet more cash. Uh, we've already spent billions, are spending billions. There's 500 million specifically today actually on that subject for local authorities to develop the off-street parking that people need or on street parking that people need if they do happen to live in flats uh, if they happen to live where there are normally just residential parking areas uh, lamp posts with uh, charging and so on and so forth so so that is all part of today's uh, fastest chargers of the west plan all right. all right let me just keep you in your car for one more one more question a change in the law today of which i'm sure you're aware governing the use of mobile phone while driving as of today this closes a loophole that had allowed drivers to avoid pro- avoid prosecution when using their phone other than for phone calls such as taking photographs or watching videos uh, just one question if which is actually from a listener this comes from uh, marcus in walton if his phone is on one of those fixed mounts and he's using a, a sat nav such as Waze, and I'm sure others are available. Uh, is he allowed to do that, or is that now illegal? No, so- he is. He, there are two things that you can do. One, you have it in a mount, don't touch the phone, follow the sat nav. Two, when you come to uh, actually, this is actually technically illegal at the moment. If you come to the drive through, uh, McDonald's, or again, others are available since we're doing this, uh, uh, and you want to pay contactlessly with your phone, you'll be able to, whilst you're stationary, 
you know, go to the window and, and, and tap your I phone to, to pay. So uh, we're, we're clarifying that bit of the law. But the rest of it is to say there were loopholes that people were using to say, oh, well, I wasn't using the phone. I wasn't making a phone call. I was taking a photograph whilst I was right. driving. Right. People have actually been getting off on that basis. And this law change closes that but, down. But, but if Marcus's it's wife were to ring him and say, you must go via the petrol station. Grant Shapps is there with Quentin Wilson making a photo, uh, making a video. And here's the new postcode. Can Marcus then lean forward and tap in ABC 123X or something or it, not? It, 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 if his car is stationary. But uh, not uh, while on the move. But not whilst you're moving. Not okay. whilst you're moving. Uh, you know, you've got to, you, when you program your, your sat nav, you should be okay. stationary, not driving along trying to touch the phone. That's the point. Can we come to other matters? Obviously, ferries are under your very wide watch there in transport. P and O, the boss appearing before some of your parliamentary colleagues yesterday, talking about how how eight hundred staff were sacked, and unbelievably seeing seeming to say he'd do it again. Your view on that, Secretary of State? Brazen, breath, breathtaking, arrogance. Uh, I, I, he needs to uh, consider his position. In fact, he needs to resign. We will not allow the situation to rest where it is. He deliberately sought to. Uh, hide what the company uh, was doing, break the law by his own admission, break the law uh, and uh, sack those workers and then pay them not to take uh, P&O to tribunal and re-employ in those positions on below the minimum wage, well below the minimum wage. Uh, that is unacceptable. They've used, they've, they've, they've very, very creatively looked for loopholes in the law. They've registered the ships in Cyprus, for example, uh, and much else besides. Uh, it's disgraceful. And I'm going to bring forward a package of measures this week to Parliament, which will force them to U-turn. They might as well know that today, and they might as well start taking action. Can you share with me what some of those measures might be, Secretary of State? Well, obviously, I want to announce them to Parliament, but to give you just, a, just, a just give of, me an overview. Uh, to give you, you an can. overview. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, maritime law and employment law are incredibly complex because they're governed by international treaty uh, and law, as well as by things like our Minimum uh, Wage uh, Act. So. Uh, we'll be tackling this from every possible angle. Uh, letters going out to our ports um, to say that we believe that they should put in place, for example, uh, conditions of use of the port, uh, which involve if they have ships which regularly ply um, the British routes, uh, then they should be paying the minimum wage. There's no reason why onshore you should pay the minimum wage as soon as you're in the water. But in British economic zone, you, you shouldn't. That's wrong. Um, we will we will seek to change the law, by both by primary and by secondary legislation. And pretty uh, rapidly, so, I sense, Secretary and, 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 and rapidly. You can do the secondary faster than the primary. Okay. Uh, we will um, seek to uh, create international agreements about uh, the routes that run uh, and the, the pay of staff on it. We will take all of these different measures in order to force P&O, and actually, by the way, Irish ferries, who's already done this, uh, to if they're using British routes regularly uh, to U-turn on this and prevent others like Stenner and DFDS who have so, not gone down this path. Do you think those uh, 800 blokes and women might get their jobs back, Secretary of State? It means some of them, uh, some of them might. I know as a fact, because I've been talking to some of them, that some of them have already accepted other jobs. Right. And I know blue chip employers were already down in Dover on the on last Thursday when this happened, snapping them up. Really? Uh, they're very desirable employees, by I'm the way. Sure. We yeah. have very low unemployment in this country at the moment, 3.9%. Uh, the job market's incredibly tight, therefore. And okay. P&O, I'm afraid, may, may end up finding they have to pay more to bring people back in. They've made a complete dog's in. What a pig's ear they've made they of this. And it, we, we will show them that it doesn't pay uh, to deliberately go out and seek to break the law. Final minute with you, if I can. Uh, one of your colleagues, uh, Kwesi Kwarteng, we've just seen he's at Asda getting himself a tin of Pepsi uh, and, a, and a Mars bar. But he has complained that the petrol retailers are not passing on that 5p tax. I appreciate this is more on uh, your colleague's brief, but what would you say to those retailers who are not passing on Mr Sunak's cut? But absolutely pass this on. And I'm going to ask your listeners to help us with this. Everyone has become very aware, seeing, you know, £1.66, £1.70 for, for, for a litre of petrol. Help us with this. Shop around so that they learn that if they don't pass this on, then they're going to lose business. So we can have consumer pressure. Plus, uh, we'll be putting maximum pressure on not just as ministers, but through the various different watchdogs uh, to highlight um, to highlight who is and isn't passing that on. But if you're one of the majors... Uh, please make sure that you are passing this on. And I know that, that, that some of the supermarkets 
uh, well, should we mention that Asda's and Morrison's and yes, Tesco yes. and Sainsbury's, they offer cheaper petrol generally anyway. So do shop around. Vote with your feet. And lastly, pressure also on Monsieur Macron, President Macron, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, keen to supply kit, particularly tanks, as President Zelensky has asked. It would appear that Monsieur Macron is averse to that. What would you say to, to, to Mr Macron and uh, Boris Johnson's determination to try and get those tanks where they're needed? Well, look, I, look I, I, I won't go into specifics other than to say Britain has not only just offered a, a further 6,000 defensive missiles to Ukraine. We also had, as, as you know, provided those defensive missiles before this war started. And we're the only country to have stood four square behind Ukraine like that. I speak to my opposite number, Kubrakov, uh, frequently. Uh, and uh, he's, he's still in Kiev. He's the he's the infrastructure transport minister uh, there. They are incredibly grateful for the assistance of British people. He called he says that Britain's been pioneering uh, in our support. And I think that everybody um, that, you know, wants to uh, help Ukraine, all the people well, coming forward to offer their homes. Well, you have, uh, haven't you? I, 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 I read that to, you are to host a family. Is that correct, sir? It, it, it is correct. And we've got a, a family which is a mum. A child uh, who's six and a half, uh, a grandmother who's 75, and their dog who's called Max, uh, come <laughs> to live with us uh, as soon as we can get all the. All, uh, are, are, the you, are you a dog nice lover, Mr. Shapps? We, 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 as, as I'm sure I've mentioned before, we, 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 we have dogs uh, okay. in our house. Well, credit to you. You've. Uh... You put your money where your mouth is, or whatever the expression is, and many politicians talk about doing it. You've done it, so well done to you, and indeed to your family as well. It needs to be said to the Shapps family as well. Thank you for your time, and must go. Thank you. Grant Shapps, Transport Secretary, appearing here on LBC, 3 After 8 News. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom.